this is easily my favorite group. I find it absolutely fascinating. Belgium, Canada, Croatia, Morocco. Croatia have sort of reloaded with some young players and then some of the core pieces from that 2018 runners-up team. But it's not like they brought back, you know, 18 guys from that team. It's more like half of that. And that it's still a Kovacic, Brozovic, Modric midfield, which is just incredible. And if you have that kind of midfield, you have a chance to win this tournament and get back to another World Cup final. I, I, there's plenty of enough talent around them. I want that. I want my midfield, and they've got one of the best in this tournament. And then on the Belgian side, yes, it is nowhere near the best teams this Golden Generation has put out. They have missed their best chance. Easily. And a lot of those players are still sticking around, which tells you there's not that much talent coming through the pipeline, and they have not been able to retool the way Croatia has. But you still have De Bruyne in his prime, Lukaku, in his prime, you did add Yuri Tillmans to the mix. They have world-class players who are still in their prime. So I'm I'm not convinced the sun has completely set on a Belgian opportunity here. Do they have enough to actually win this entire tournament? Maybe not. But I wouldn't be... Part of me thinks they're going to get one more run out of this. Primarily because Kevin Durban is still there and thriving. Then you get to the other two teams here. Morocco is welcoming back. Hakim Ziyech. New manager. That was seemed like a chemistry disaster. So they sort of scrapped everything right before the World Cup. Seemed to be in a much better place. Ziyech was brought back from exile. So you've got a better squad. You've got a dynamic guy in Ziyech. This is a talented team that I would like their chances of getting out in a different group. <laughs> they just got a really tough draw. And the other team they got a really tough draw is Canada. I would be picking Canada, certainly out of group A, out of group B, out of group C, just off the top of my head there, and those weren't the only ones. Probably out of at least half of the groups, I would be picking Canada to go through. They are, to me, probably the best third, quote-unquote, third team in a group. And so, if Croatia, for some reason, you know, Perisic, Modric, just don't have the legs for whatever reason, if De Bruyne gets hurt, and all of a sudden, Belgium is not the same team. If something happens, Canada is going to be right there, similar to what I was talking about with Japan. And Canada might just get out of this group anyway. And I'm really interested in the Canada-Croatia matchup in particular, not only because I think those are the two teams that are battling for the second spot, but because that is a, a team with a lot of, you know, traction and wear on your your body in terms of the Modricic and Perisicic of the world against the pace and one-on-one -on -one ability of Alfonso Davies, of Tejan Buchanan, Kyle Lahren, Jonathan David. This kind of team is really, really good. They're going to be even better in 2026. But don't don't sleep on Canada. I do I do feel bad for them because to me they were the loser of the draw because they got stuck with two really good European teams. But from top to bottom, this is easily the most ba balanced group for me. So that's group F.